here in my hometown of Boston, Massachusetts for the 2003 EA Sports Madden Challenge. You know, when you're playing an opponent in Madden, sometimes good control of work and trash talk can only get you so far. Sometimes you want to show that opponent your game face. What's a game face? Well, it's a face that intimidates, a face that shows that opponent, don't mess with me. So we asked some of the players here in Boston today, can you show us your game face? The best one will get themselves a G4 t-shirt. That's it, tough, ain't it? so that that person can win themselves the holy grail for every gamer, the G4 t-shirt. This is Jim Murray reporting from Boston, Massachusetts for the 2003 EA Sports Madden Challenge. He came down to D.C. native Ernest Smith, who used the Bay Buccaneers, and one-time San Diego Charger running back, Bukala Sikiala Jr., who used the St. Louis Rams. Ernest Smith came out with guns blazing in the second half as he throws the deep streak to Keenan McArdle, Wide open for the touchdown to tie it up at 10 apiece. Pick it up late in the fourth quarter now, and Ernest Smith and his Buccaneers have one last shot to tie or win the game. Brad Johnson throws this pick to Jason Seahorn, who seals the win for Mukala C. Keller Jr. in his St. Louis Rams, the final 13 to 10. At the end of the game, I made a huge mental mistake. I kind of panicked, held the ball too long, got hit, he picked it off. The rest is history. You are a uh, former NFL running back, correct? Yes, I uh, played with San Diego Chargers. All my games all day have been close, and I just uh, found a way to get, a, uh, get the win. So from Washington, D.C., the Playmaker Express headed down south to Charlotte, North Carolina, where Jamel Riley and his Atlanta Falcons and Marcus Benson and the Rams battled in our final game for a spot in Las Vegas and a shot at the $50,000 prize. The first huge play of this game came in the second quarter. Jamel scrambled with Michael Vick, and he's looking for an opening. It looks bad for Jamel Riley, but he finds a hole and runs in for the touchdown. Jamel decides to go for two, and he gets it to put his Falcons up 8-7. to seven. Fourth quarter now, and it's looking bad for Marcus Benson and the Rams, but he moves down the field quickly and scores on this Marshall Falk touchdown run. Goes for the two-point conversion, but he doesn't get it. Jamel gets the ball back. He runs off the clock, and he ices the 18-13 win for his Falcons. So that means Jamel Riley is on his way to Vegas for the chance to play for the 50 grand. Talk a little bit about the two-point conversion you went for early in the game. The reason why I went for two to put pressure on him, and I seen him come out in the goal line. They went for two, you know that. That was a bit play. Put him ahead. Kind of caught me off guard. It was gone for a goal line versus goal line doesn't work with a half-back toss. Like this one, inside a fan. Let's take a look inside. But right here, we got the fan straight from the Bronx, you know what I'm saying? For the tournament, we ain't make it, so we made our own tournament out here. Got the 15 inch screens in there, and we got PlayStation, we got everything in there. TV, cameras, everything. I met these guys in 2002 on the internet chat room about Madden. They have a Bronx Madden League, and I said I'm nice, they said they nice. So we hooked up to see who was better. My man Young Gun playing a dude from Brooklyn. He is gonna blow this dude out. The kid from Brooklyn is not skin. I'm trying to tell y'all dudes I can't beat Young Gun. My man is too nice. All the rest of y'all are bums. Now let me ask you something. If you amass enough money playing some Madden inside this van of yours, uh, you're gonna trick it out a little bit, put some spinners on there, maybe, maybe make it a little bit nice? You gotta keep it simple outside so nobody will know what's inside. There's <laughs> about 12,000 inside over About 12,000 in equipment inside. 
joint right here is like the Madden Tourbus, but it's for the hood. It's so real. It's so real. When dudes gotta go see their PO, they drive in the van and they play the game of Matt. It don't matter where we going. This is all love right here. Black, white, Spanish, Chinese, whatever. We're gonna do this every year. You'll see us again here in the parking lot. We'll be having two, three more vans next year. Watch. So there you have it. You've taken a look inside this mobile Madden van that we got here. And for about $12,000, you can basically do the same rig yourself. You just might want to park before you start playing. This is Jim Murray reporting for G4TV.com. Hey, what's going on? It's Jim Murray checking in from the fun and sun of Miami for the 2003 EA Sports Madden Challenge, where today we have some of South Florida's best playmakers heating up this competition for the chance to play for that $50,000 grand prize in Las Vegas. The final game of the day in Miami came down to our youngest finalists yet. 15-year-old Terrell Samuel took the Atlanta Falcons, and 16-year-old Matt Brothers chose to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let's pick it up in the third quarter. Terrell Samuel had seen a 13-point first-half lead for his Falcons evaporate, and he found himself now trailing Matt Brothers and his Bucks 22-21. This play, Michael Vick gets sacked by Tampa Bay. The Buccaneers' Nate Webster picks it up, and Matt Brothers takes him to the house for a 29-21 lead. Now in the fourth quarter, Terrell Samuel had come back to tie it at 29 apiece, but Matt Brothers and the Buccaneers had control of the ball and the clock. He moves down the field and sets up for this Martin Gramatica field goal to win the game. And it's uh, no good. <laughs> Terrell Samuel has got to get into field goal range, and he does so on this deep bomb to Brian Finneran. Terrell Samuel goes for the field goal to win it as time expires for the amazing 32-29 comeback win. I didn't think I was going to make the field goal because of the, the TV. It was like a little delay or something. But I, I just guessed right and I made the field. He just got a lot of things going his way that game. I guess it was just made for him to make, win that game. He beat me. He's a champion. From Red Hot Miami, the Playmaker Express brought us to Raymond James Stadium in Tampa Bay. And that's where our two finalists, Lou Tillery and Antoine Brothers, squared off, appropriately enough, in a battle of the Bucks. Late in the first half, Lou Tillery's Buccaneers were trailing Antoine Brothers 14 to nothing. And Lou certainly isn't going to find points this way as he throws this pick to Derek Brooks. Antoine Brothers turns the interception into points on this Joe Jeremish's touchdown to end the first half. Start of the third quarter now, and Lou Tillery needs points fast. He's got to get on the board, and he does it with this touchdown pass to Keenan McCardle on the first play from scrimmage. Another pick to Derek Brooks led to a Michael Pittman touchdown, and this last interception by Brian Kelly ices the win for Antoine's Bucks as he avenges his brother's loss in Miami and takes the Tampa Regional 28-7. Messed up early in the game when I didn't make a hot route that I needed to make, and he did another route that I didn't expect, and that like basically put me behind the eight ball. My opponent, I like hear a little stumble by the blitz, but he's a real good opponent, and I looped him in Las Vegas.